What's going on guys? This is Will from Strive. Today our topic is one that's talked about all the time and it's core training for basketball players. So what is really the biggest difference between training for aesthetics and training for function? What's the difference between training for function and training for basketball? Well, it really depends on what we're looking for. So today we're gonna to talk about how to train the core, especially for basketball players. What do we need to be thinking? What are the things that we need to check off to make sure that our core program is the best possible program so that it translates onto the court and gives us the best results. Let's get it going. So the first thing I want you guys to think about when it comes to core training is what we call movements over muscles. And basically when I say movements over muscles, instead of thinking upper abs, lower abs, obliques or serratus or whatever you want to really call it, I want you to think about how the body really works and how the core actually functions. So today I'm going to introduce a few movements to you guys that you may have heard, may not have heard, that may change your perspective in different ways. So the core, just like bodies and joints, move in what we call three planes of motion. This is very important to remember because a lot of the times when we're a little stuck in an area or injury happens, it's because one of those planes of motion haven't been trained properly. So when we look at the sagittal plane, we look at flexion and extension. It's basically shortening and lengthening. When we look at the frontal plane, we talk about lateral flexion, okay, on both sides. Then when we look at uh, the last plane of motion, which is transverse plane, it goes rotation. Obviously, it's left and right. Now, it's great that we can perform those movements, but in sport, and especially in a contact sport like basketball, it is equally important to be able to prevent those movements from happening. Now, what do I mean by that? When I'm driving to the rim and I get hit real good by a defender, well, most likely I want to go into some sort of lateral flexion and some sort of rotation. Let's not make it too complicated. But it's my ability to really absorb that force, prevent myself from falling to the side, and keep going. So the second component of building a proper core exercise for basketball is the speed of the movement. When I think about the speed of the movement, a lot of the times when we go to the gym, uh, we may see people say working on sit-ups, working on crunches, reverse crunches, leg raises, all those great things. So first of all, I'm saying that those things are necessary, but only part of a proper core workout for basketball. Now, another component that we have to look at is the speed of the movement. A lot of the times when we play basketball, it's very, very explosive, especially when we want to utilize our core, get up over a defender, uh, blow by a defender. Remember, the core is not just for getting up, it's changing directions, deceleration, all that kind of good stuff. So we have to look at controlled movement. So say, for example, a sit-up should be uh, a very controlled movement, leg raise is a very controlled movement, as opposed to an explosive movement. So when we think about something like a chop and a lift, something that requires the full body, usually we can train it in a controlled movement to start, but at some point in order for it to translate into the court, it's gonna have to become explosive. Then we wanna think about general to specific. General, again, things like a leg raise, things like a reverse crunch, things like a crunch are all great, but these things are general movements, just part of the program that we need in order to translate it into the specific movements that we need for basketball. Third component we have to look at it is the base of support. Basically, what I'm talking about is our feet, our foot placement. What kind of foot placements are you gonna see in basketball? Too many to think about because there's just, it's just an ever-changing game where my feet are constantly changing depending if I'm jumping, depending how I'm jumping, depend, depends on if I'm shuffling, depends on what I'm doing, there's just too many foot placements. But guess what? We have to think about those foot placements in order to know how we want to train that core. So stances, am I using a staggered stance like I'm driving to the rim? Am I having a parallel stance where I'm, it's more of a uh, up and down motion? Am I a staggered stance with my toes going in? Am I a sta staggered stance with the toes going out? These are things that we all need to think about when we think of base of support in developing a proper core program for basketball. So the last part that we want to talk about when it comes to developing a complete core exercise for basketball players is the extremities involved in the movement. Now think about it. Very rarely in basketball do you need to be sitting or lying down. Therefore, that though it makes those movements general, where we want to be standing in different stances, which makes us specific. The only time you're really sitting down is if you're on the bench, and the majority of our viewers don't want to be there. So we're going to be talking about different ways of working standing up. So one way to work it is our legs moving while our hands are not moving. So I might have a certain overhead movement right here, either to the side or up above, and the only thing that is moving is really our legs, okay? So that's the first option. Second option is that our hands are moving, okay, but our legs are stationed and are, uh, are static for the most part. Then the last one, which is most specific to the game of basketball, is 
both both sets of extremities are moving. My arms are moving while my legs are moving. My arms are moving while my legs are moving. Now, believe it or not, when we walk, when we do any pretty, pretty much any movement, it's a full body exercise. It's not isolated to one body part. It's an entire body exercise. And therefore, there's most of the time in the weight room, we need to train that way in order to make sure that we get the most benefits out of our time in the weight room. So guys, wrapping up, I want you guys to have a different mind frame and thinking about how to train the core in order to really become the best basketball player that you can be. Instead of thinking upper abs, lower abs, and side abs or obliques or however you wanna, you wanna think about it, think about what kind of movements do I need in basketball? What kind of actions will I see? What kind of base of support will I be in? How fast am I gonna do with the movements? And how many different extremities, arms and legs, do I want involved while working on my core? We're gonna see you guys next time.